number 10, we have Deception Island. In 1906, a Norwegian Chilean whaling company started using Whalers Bay as a base for their factory ship. Other operations followed closely behind them, and then the next thing you know, a boom town was born. But then, by just 1931, after a sweeping decline in the market for whale oil due to the Great Depression, the island was abandoned. Since then, it has quite literally become a ghost town, with visitors reporting seeing strange orbs of light coming from the abandoned huts, seeing apparitions of people walking around, and even hearing disembodied voices. So while the South Pole remains a harsh land with no official permanent population, it seems that ghosts who are unaffected by what makes the South Pole so difficult to endure have settled in and haunt all those who try to enter their domain. Next up at number 9. Wordy Hut. Although it's named after James Wordy, who was the chief scientist for Sir Edmund Shackleton's endurance expedition in 1914, the Wordy Hut was built much later in 1947. For years, it had been rumored to be haunted by terrifying spirits, and after several reports, a group of paranormal researchers from Destination Truth decided to see for themselves and spend a night in the hut. When they arrived, they were immediately taken back by the energy of the cabin. They knew that something was there. That night, members of the team heard frantic flipping of light switches and slamming doors from rooms where no one was staying. Jars began falling off the shelves all on their own, and after their one night stay, they left completely creeped out. Now, I always think a telling tale of if some place is truly scary is when paranormal investigators, people whose job is literally to investigate creepy stuff, get scared and don't want to come back. Well, even so, visitors have checked it out since, but all reported similar events that chilled them to the bone and have never returned. Next up at number 8. The Ghost Ship of Jenny. Thought to have been abandoned in port in 1823, this ship was thought to be lost forever. That was until a whaling ship made a horrifying discovery a few years later back in 1840. As the legend goes, Jenny had gotten stuck in the ice while on its expedition, and no one knew where it had ended up or what had happened to the crew aboard. That was until the whaling ship discovered them, and believing it to be the legendary Jenny, decided to go on board to check out what might still be on it. When they made their way onto the ship, they were horrified to find all the bodies frozen solid and perfectly preserved by the ice. Allegedly, the crew found a note they believed to be written by the captain that read, May 4th, 1823, no food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. While some believe it's just folklore, others swear by the tale claiming all the sailors of Jenny haunt the boat to this day. Coming in at number 7. Mountains of Madness. While Antarctica may be one of the most haunted places in the world, it is also home to some breathtaking scenery. But the Mountains of Madness kind of fall into the first category. Officially called the Gambertsev Mountain Range, they are roughly the size of the Alps, but there is one catch. No one has ever seen them. But how could that be, I am sure you are wondering? Well, back in the 1950s, a group of Russian explorers discovered there were strange gravity fluctuations coming from below the ice. After a bit of sleuthing, they discovered the fluctuations to be from an entire subglacial mountain range hidden below three miles of ice. First of all, the fact that there is three mile deep ice is enough of a reason for me to never want to go there, but I digress. Scientists have compared it to studying another planet, which to some might be exciting, but to others they feel it's terrifying. No one knows what kind of life could be under there, what could have been preserved there for the last 250 million years. And some have even said they've felt a strange presence when they are near. Coming in at number 6, Shackleton's Hut. Antarctica is mainly a destination visited by scientists and explorers, but considering many of the early explorers died while on these trips, it also makes a lot of sense as to why they are all haunted. And one man who claimed to be a non-believer of ghosts would return from his trip thinking much differently. His name was Sir Edmund Hillary, and he was a New Zealand mountaineer and explorer who in 1953, along with his Sherpa, was the first known person to reach the summit of Mount Everest. 
Everest. So after conquering the mountain, he was looking for another adventure and sought out the South Pole five years later. When he arrived, he stayed in Sir Ernest Shackleton's abandoned hut from his famous endurance expedition. And when he was there, he claims to have seen Shackleton's ghost walk towards him and welcome him to the hut before vanishing right in front of his eyes. Ever since, it's been known as a paranormal hotspot, and many who visit leave terrified by what they see. Next up at number five, Scott's Hut. During the early 1900s, there was a huge race to be the first country to reach the South Pole. Then in 1911, explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his team set out on a mission against Norway, later called the Terra Nova Expedition, to do just that. While many explorers, Scott included, had explored Antarctica, none had managed to reach the pole. And so the race was on. A hut was pre-constructed in Britain that was brought over as a base camp for the crew, and they set up near the Great Ice Barrier. Eventually, it was decided some of the men would stay behind with supplies and shelter, and the rest of the team would venture out further. But sadly, their mission was ultimately a bust, as by the time they reached the pole, the Norwegian flag had already been planted. So the men turned around to head back, but sadly, due to frostbite, starvation, and disease, the men died off one by one and never made their return. Those that have visited the hut today claim to hear strange voices and footsteps all around the cabin. Apparently the minute you walk in, you feel as though you're being watched, and some even swear they've seen the ghosts of Scott and his men lurk inside. Next up at number four, Ross Island. Home to one of the most recognized research stations across the continent, it's also the site of a devastating plane crash that left the island drowning in lost spirits. Back in 1977, New Zealand began operating sightseeing trips via plane over Antarctica. But in 1979, a true disaster would strike. Though exactly what happened is unknown, somehow the computer directing the flight got rerouted, and instead of taking its usual trip, it ended up flying dangerously close to a nearby mountain. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, the plane crashed, instantly killing all 257 passengers and crew members on board. Today, those that visit the island claim to hear unsettling voices in the darkness as well as strange ghostly footsteps. Some say they have even seen what they believe to be the flight victims wandering around the frigid landscape, eerily moaning and crying at night. So while there may be some beautiful places to visit, you might want to steer clear of this haunted island altogether. Coming in at number three, a Soviet military base. Back in 2009, scientists passing through through the icy scape came across a strange and concerning discovery. While exploring what's called the Pole of Inaccessibility, which is the point furthest from the sea in Antarctica, the group found a random monument with a bust of Vladimir Lenin perched on top. Now, if you don't know who that is or why that's a little bit creepy, let me explain. Vladimir Lenin was the founder of the Soviet Union and first head of government under the new regime. It was under his ruling that Russia became a one-party communist state. So upon discovering his lone bust in the middle of nowhere, the scientists decided it might be a good idea to keep exploring. After some digging, they happened upon an old Soviet military base that was covered by mountains of snow, and they realized that the bust was facing the direction of Moscow. Now, no one knows how long the bust has been there, and even creepier, no one knows why it's there. But many suspect that it might be the place where Lenin was buried back in 1924, and it's thought that his ghost may still haunt the area to this day. Coming in at number two, Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the southernmost volcano on Earth. Earth, and it's still very much active. Some like to refer to it as the place where fire meets ice, as well inside the mountain it's swirling with molten hot magma, the outside remains frozen solid and is surrounded by ice caves. And while that might sound super cool, it is also the site of the infamous Ross Island plane crash that I already spoke about, and so it's littered with ghosts seeking revenge for having their lives taken too soon. And while many of the spirits are known to roam around the entire island, frightening visitors at every chance, some of the spirits are stuck in the place that took their lives. Some say that if you walk past the mountain, you can still hear the screams of the victims who lost their lives to the crash. 
And last up in our number one spot, we have the Drake Passage. The Drake Passage may just be the most well-known part of all of Antarctica, but probably not for a good reason. Widely considered the most powerful convergence of seas, the Drake Passage is the point where the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean converge with the southern seas, and it is notorious for its treacherous waters. It's a great feat for anyone to even dare to cross it, and it's estimated over the years that more than a thousand people have died attempting to pass through its terrifying and turbulent waves. Many believe that all who have lost their lives to the passage remain, haunting the waters to warn those that attempt the feat to turn back. Or maybe they're trying to bring you into their realm with them. Either way, it's best to stay far, far, far away because even if the ghosts don't get you, the waves almost certainly will. Starting off at number 10 now, we have aliens. Wherever there is a mysterious piece of land, someone will say that aliens have been there. Antarctica is obviously one one of those places. One of the more recent claims came in April 2017, when conspiracy theorists claimed to have found evidence of an underwater base off the coast of Antarctica. The 500 meter long object was spotted on Smiley Island. This image was posted to the website for UFO sightings hotspot. The first thing people usually say is that it just kind of looks like an iceberg that split away from the mainland. The UFO sightings website disagrees though. They say the object does not fit in with the normal shapes of usual icebergs. They say that the shapes and forms from this iceberg look very different when compared with icebergs, if that makes sense. They believe that it could actually be a secret UFO vessel in disguise. What do you think? Next up at number 9 now, we have the ice wall. Ah, flat earthers. Don't they always have the best theories? A lot of flat earth critics raised a very fair question of what exactly happens when people sail or fly to the end of the earth and how do we not just, you know, fall off? The Flat Earth Society believes that there is a massive 150 foot ice wall surrounding the coast of Antarctica. Not only is it tall, it's also very thick, several hundreds of meters thick to be precise. Flat earthers often cite the British explorer James Clark Ross. The British expeditions went to Antarctica in the mid 1800s. In his travel notes he wrote of an icy wall saying it was an obstruction of such character as to leave no doubt in my mind as to our future proceedings for we might as well sail through the cliffs of Dover as to penetrate such a mass. Although of course many historians and those who have actually read the full extent of his journals will know that he is talking about an ice shelf, the Ross ice shelf that was named after him, although this shelf is just 50 meters high and was 600 kilometers long until it recently broke apart. To end this point about the ice wall, let me read one of my favorite quotes from the Flat Earth Society. Beyond the 150 foot ice wall is anyone's guess. How far the ice extends, how it terminates, and what exists beyond it are questions to which no present human experience can reply. Apart from, you know, I guess humans who study science, humans with telescopes humans who have actually been to space, but yeah, forget about them. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Atlantis. For centuries, people have been searching for Atlantis, the lost island that Plato wrote about in the Republic. It was the home of the Atlanteans, a technologically advanced civilization who were said to possess almost mystical qualities beyond the average human group. Some people dismissed it as fiction, but others have become convinced that the island is real and that it was submerged under the water thousands of years ago. There's a theory that Atlantis was not submerged though and that it actually was frozen in the ice of Antarctica. In April 2018, the YouTube channel Conspiracy Depot shared a Google Earth image which shows a strange area in the Antarctic ice. The image shows a series of lines that, according to the video, have an artificial origin and have recently been exposed due to melting ice in the area. Now they say the object is split into three parts that are all about 7 meters long. It almost seems too perfect to be formed naturally. Okay, moving on to number 7 now, we have Nazis. I remember one video I did a while back where I discussed in detail the theory that the Nazi party survived World War II and are currently living in a base on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. That was an interesting theory, but so is this. A lot of people think that this secret base was actually in Antarctica. They say that scientists in the Third Reich mapped out an area of rivers and caves across Antarctica. Then they discovered a large underground lake. They decided this would be the perfect place for their secret base. They supposedly called it Base 22 or New Berlin. For the conspiracy theorists who believe this, they are now split between the ones who think the base is just 
lost beneath the ice and the ones who think it is still home to a Nazi community all these years on. Next up at number 6 now we have the Bloop. You guys may have heard me mention this one before. The Bloop was a nickname given to a strange sound picked up by hydrophones across the Pacific in 1997. The hydrophones are essentially like giant microphones listing out for sounds. They are positioned over 5,000 kilometers apart from each other, so it's not very often they are all picking up the same sound at the same time. Except this time, a number of them picked up the same loud ultra low frequency sound across the Pacific. Take a listen. Now to many people that sounds like an animal, some sort of creature that made a noise so loud it was picked up across earth's biggest ocean. If such a creature did exist it would be bigger than anything we've ever seen. That's the only way it could make a sound that loud. Well scientists say this is not true and that the sound was actually caused by ice quakes in the Antarctic. It's the sound of ice breaking up and cracking and the sound was picked up as the bloop. Some people still aren't buying that though and say that the sound may have come from Antarctica but it was definitely biological in nature. Moving on to number 5 now we have the hollow earth. Now you've all heard of the flat earth theory that we talked about earlier, but have you heard of the hollow earth theory? As you can probably guess from the name, it proposes that the planet is entirely hollow empty on the inside, that we all live on a shell on the surface that is about 500 miles thick which is actually only a fraction of the way to the centre of the earth. So where does Antarctica come into this? Well in December 2016 a study was published indicating there seems to be a massive anomaly underneath the ice of Antarctica. Some researchers believe it to be the remains of a truly massive asteroid that is more than twice the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Another theory though is that it could be the portal or entrance to this hollow earth we live on. I also read an article about Russian scientists drilling down through the ice in Antarctica. Hopefully they don't just kind of pierce through to the hollowness. What? Moving on to number 4 now we have Area 51. It doesn't matter what kind of video I do about conspiracy theories, Area 51 will always seem to crop up in conversation even in Antarctica. In March 2018 news articles began circulating about Arrival Heights, a secret laboratory located deep in the mountains of Antarctica that is called Area 122. That kind of makes you think of how many secret bases there have been between Area 51 and Area 122. Well, I guess the answer is 71, but yeah. Journalists from New Zealand investigated the lab and found that it was filled with very old technology. It was very strange, like something out of a movie. The computers had floppy disk drives. Some of you guys might be too young to even know what that is. There was also a huge computer called the Dobson Spectrometer, which had a periscope sticking up out of the roof. So what is this whole place all for then? Well they say it's to study the hole in the ozone layer above the continent. The old equipment is so sensitive that even breathing or speaking too loudly is said to damage it. Some people say that the base is hiding more secrets and that Area 122 could be the new Area 51. Moving on to number 3 now we have the pyramids. In 2013 an article in ScienceRaid.com claimed that 3 ancient pyramids have been discovered in the Antarctic by a team of American and European scientists. Relatively little is known about the pyramids and the team behind their discovery has remained quite silent about the whole thing ever since. One piece of information that emerged was that they were planning an expedition to the pyramids to research them properly and determine if they were natural or man-made. If they're natural they could simply be the product of erosion or tectonic activity, but if they're man-made that would open up the suggestion of an ancient civilization. We know of only a handful of civilizations that built pyramids as big as the ones that have been discovered in Antarctica, most notably the Aztecs and the ancient Egyptians. Conspiracy theorists are already jumping on board with the Antarctica pyramids being proof of a lost pyramid building civilization. Next up on number 2 now we have the big melt. As I'm sure you're all aware Antarctica is covered in a sheet of ice. At some points it's 3 miles thick and as I'm sure you've seen on the news the ice caps are melting. When you see those images of glaciers drifting out into the ocean it's natural to think what if it all goes? Well 
that would obviously be a disaster. Some estimates say that if all the ice on the Antarctica sheet was to melt, sea levels would rise by 200 feet. To give you an idea of what this would do, the entire east coast of the US would be underwater and Florida would pretty much vanish. It would just be entirely underwater. Another scary aspect of all of this is that we don't know how much or how quickly this could happen or even what it would look like. Climate scientists still have a lot to understand when it comes to this process, but their worst case scenario paints a pretty grim picture. And finally number one now we have ancient diseases. As we all know, Antarctica is pretty cold. So cold, land is buried under 2 kilometers of ice. Recently in Siberia, in part of the Arctic Circle, nomadic tribes were affected by an outbreak of anthrax that came as a result of permafrost melting and unleashing an ancient strain. A 12 year old boy died and thousands of reindeer became infected. Obviously there are many reasons to be worried about the ice caps melting, but it seems that ancient diseases could be trapped under the ice that modern day humans and animals have no resistance to. As the ice is so thick, we literally cannot know what is under there and what might be lurking. It seems that the permafrost provides the perfect conditions for bacteria to remain alive, dormant for millions of years. Scientists are worried that a Pandora's box of illnesses we don't know how to cure are out there waiting to emerge one day. And number 10, the mysterious restricted zones. Restricted zones in Antarctica have long intrigued adventurers and conspiracy theorists alike. While some may speculate about dark reasons behind these restrictions, the reality is more grounded in environmental conservation and scientific research. Allegedly. One scientific factor behind these restricted zones is the need to safeguard sensitive ecosystems and wildlife breeding grounds, as Antarctica boasts unique biodiversity biodiversity including penguins, seals, and various microorganisms. Human interference in these areas could disrupt these delicate ecosystems, leading to potentially irreversible damage. Moreover, most Antarctic exploration is dedicated to scientific research, not tourism. Researchers study climate change, geology, and the mysteries of the continent's ice sheets. And to maintain the integrity of these investigations, certain areas are off limits to prevent contamination or interference. Additionally, Antarctica holds numerous historic and culturally significant sites like research stations and explorer huts. These locations are protected to preserve their historical value and ensure that they remain intact for future generations to study and admire. So while the allure of hidden secrets persists, the true reasons for these restrictions are grounded in conservation and the pursuit of knowledge. Speaking of which, at number 9 are the conservation efforts. Antarctica, the icy realm at the southern end of our planet, hides many mysteries, but dark reasons prevent unrestricted exploration. Now as mentioned, conservation efforts are paramount. The untouched beauty of Antarctica could be mirrored by human activity, and contamination and damage to its ecosystems loom as potential threats if we don't tread lightly. Moreover, the wildlife here already faces risks. Penguins, seals, and seabirds alike call this frigid wilderness home, and exploration can disturb their delicate existence. If you're enjoying this video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8, good luck getting there. Icebergs, my friends, may seem like an innocuous obstacle, but they're just the tip of the iceberg, if you will, when it comes to the dark reasons no one's allowed to explore the Antarctic freely. You see, limited accessibility is just the tip of this frozen mystery. First, let's talk about those icebergs. They're not just chunks of ice floating around, they're colossal, unpredictable beasts. Like, the Titanic, as we all know, met its fate with one of these behemoths, and that was in the comparatively ice-free waters of the North Atlantic. Imagine the peril of navigating through the variable maze of these frozen monstrosities in the unforgiving southern cities. But that's just the start. Antarctica holds secrets beyond its icy exterior. At number 7, geopolitical tensions in Antarctica are a cold, hard reality. Though it's devoid of military skirmishes, the region is a simmering pot of territorial disputes. You see, several countries, including the United States, Russia, and China, have laid claims to various parts of the icy continent, and this could escalate into a diplomatic quagmire. The Antarctic Treaty, in place since 1959, aims to preserve the area for scientific research and environmental protection, but beneath the surface, these nations maintain their ambitions. Recent years have seen an uptick in activity, with some establishing research stations and some doing who knows what. The fear is that competition for resources and materials and fresh water could turn this frozen land into a geopolitical battleground. So while the Antarctic may seem like an untouched frontier, it's a political ice maze with dark undertones that could chill international relations. And aliens, well, 
That's just a different kind of frosty tail. At number six, limited infrastructure. In the vast expanse of Antarctica, cloaked in perpetual darkness during the frigid winters, it conceals a multitude of dark reasons why human exploration remains restricted. But one of the main ones is the forbidding terrain, which offers limited infrastructure. The desolate frozen desert is devoid of roads, airports, and other vital facilities. So without proper support systems, em embarking on large-scale expeditions becomes a perilous endeavor. The unforgiving environment and treacherous weather conditions amplify the challenges. In the heart of the Antarctic amidst its enigmatic allure, these dark reasons combine to shroud the southernmost continent in secrecy and restriction. At number five, why would you even want to go in the first place? I mean, come on, Antarctica is like no other place on Earth. It's not just difficult to reach, it's practically inhospitable. The numbers alone here are mind-boggling. In the summer, you've got one person per 3,570 square kilometers, and that number drops to one per 14,285 square kilometers in the winter. Compare that to Greenland next in line, with a population density 108 times greater in the summer, and a whopping 433 times greater in the winter. Now, let's talk size. Antarctica is a colossus. It's 1.4 times bigger than the USA, 58 times bigger than the UK, and 1.8 times bigger than Australia. But here's the kicker. It's mostly empty. The land is barren and unproductive. No one has ever survived on the food that grows there, if it grows at all. And the environment is brutal, to say the least. It's the coldest, windiest continent, with ice caps making it the highest, too. Go far enough south, and you're looking at up to six months of continuous darkness during winter. But wait, it gets worse. Antarctica is safeguarded by the Antarctic Treaty, a pact agreed upon by 55 countries, representing 64% of the world's population. It's off-limits for territorial claims and military use. Environmental protections, added in 1991, mandate strict anti-pollution and environmental damage rules for visitors and travel companies. So why not explore? Well, just take a look at the whole damn frozen package. At number four, money, money, money. Money is often cited as the darkest reason why many people can't explore Antarctica. It's not that you're not allowed, but rather it's prohibitively expensive. The sheer cost of getting to and surviving on this icy continent is staggering. Most of the folks here are scientists, and if you're not part of a research team, you won't find much financial help or logistical support. Antarctica's remote location compounds the expense. Specialized equipment like cold-resistant gear and vehicles is mandatory. Plus, the logistics involved in reaching and navigating Navigating this frigid landmass are a logistical nightmare. Limited resources add another layer to this financial conundrum. Fuel and supplies are scarce, and every bit must be managed meticulously to sustain both research and survival efforts. So while there aren't any conspiratorially sinister secrets stopping you from exploring Antarctica, the cold hard truth is that it's a costly endeavor that demands a lot more than just curiosity. And number three is the bureaucracy. Is it legal to go to Antarctica? Well, not exactly, but it's not really a free-for-all either. The Antarctic Treaty, signed by numerous countries, lays down the law. If you're from one of these signatory nations and want to venture south, you'll need permission. Tourists or workers get this clearance on their behalf, but if you're a lone wolf explorer, you'd better be prepared. No relying on research stations for food or shelter, and you must prove that you won't harm the environment. Get denied and go anyway? Brace yourself for legal fines or jail time upon your return, if you return at all. But why all this red tape? Well, international agreements like the Arctic Treaty aim to preserve Antarctica's scientific and environmental sanctity. They want to keep it a hub of cooperation, not a playground for reckless adventurers. So while the idea of the Antarctic expedition might sound exciting, it's a place where rules, not rogue explorers, reign supreme. And number two, it's, it's freaking cold, man. Antarctica's frigid embrace is the first deterrent. Temperatures plummet to a mind-numbing depth, plunging as low as minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit, a cold so severe it could freeze exposed flesh in mere minutes. The relentless winds known to reach hurricane force speeds can transform a leisurely expedition into a perilous escapade. See if the concerns cast an ominous shadow as well. Remote and isolated, this frozen continent is unforgiving to those unprepared for its unfathomable challenges. Medical facilities are scarce, and a mishap could spell doom in this desolation. The isolation itself possesses psychological risks, with months of darkness and extreme solitude pushing the boundaries of mental endurance. Antarctica's austere beauty can seals the darkness beneath, 
a place where nature reigns supreme and human hubris is met with icy indifference. It remains a place reserved for the most intrepid, a place where recklessness is the harbinger of despair. At number one, go ahead. For real. Exploring Antarctica might not be as forbidden as some may think. Yes, it's true that the frosty expanse of the southernmost continent has a reputation for being a secluded and inhospitable place, but the notion that no one's allowed to explore is a bit of a misconception. The truth is, Antarctica is accessible to those with the means and the skills. You see, many people have ventured there and they're not alone. It's a matter of having the right skill set or deep pockets. Antarctic bases require specialized personnel, and if you possess those skills, you might find yourself living amidst ice and penguins. Sure, it's expensive if you want to have your own trip, but for some, the allure of experiencing this frozen wonderland up close is worth every penny. So if you dream of treading the pristine ice of Antarctica, start saving or acquire those sought after skills, and who knows, you might just find yourself in the company of penguins on Christmas Day, just like Steve did in 2010. The tales of secret bases and alleged encounters with otherworldly beings remain in the realm of speculation, but the veil of secrecy surrounding certain areas of the Antarctic continues to raise questions. Whether it's for scientific preservation, geopolitical intrigue, or something more enigmatic, the reasons behind the restrictions of exploration in this remote corner of our planet remain shrouded in darkness. And we're kicking off this list with pyramids. So a couple years back, satellite images revealed a mysterious triangular formation in Antarctica's desolate landscape. When the images hit social media, debates and speculations about the origin of this quote unquote pyramid began, the pyramid shape appeared in satellite images of the Ellsworth mountain range located in the southern reaches of Antarctica. It seemed to have a striking resemblance to the dimensions of Egypt's iconic Great Pyramid of Giza, measuring two kilometers in each direction from its square base. And as these images circulated on social media platforms, the conspiracy theories began to flow. Now, scientists attribute these formations to natural processes and optical illusions, but perhaps there's a deeper secret being hidden from us in the cold, inhospitable terrain of Antarctica. Was there some ancient civilization that used to call the South Pole home? Did a group of beings from somewhere beyond our planet construct it? I don't know, I'm just here to ask the important questions. And now I'm here to tell you that if you are liking our channel so far, if you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button? We have uh, awesome videos coming at you on the daily, plenty to see, don't miss out, do that right now. Next up we have the Anita Discovery. The Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or Anita, is a sophisticated scientific tool in the form of a high-tech balloon operated by NASA floating above Antarctica. Its mission is to track subatomic particles generated by the interactions of high-energy neutrinos entering Earth's atmosphere from the depths of space. But a few years ago, Anita made a strange discovery. It detected neutrinos seemingly originating from beneath the Earth's surface, quite the departure from its intended uh, function of capturing space-borne neutrinos. One of the more fun hypotheses behind this is that these detected particles may be signs of a possible parallel universe where the fundamental laws of our own universe might operate in complete reverse. Now, this is really just speculative, but it's a pretty fascinating idea. Scientists were pretty perplexed by these findings, and as of right now, there still isn't a definitive explanation. At number eight, we have the Ross Island Haunting. Ross Island is not only home to the McMurdo Station, a hub for scientific research, it also harbors something much darker. It's rumored to be haunted. There was a tragic plane crash on the island in 1979, and this crash claimed the lives of 257 people. Over the years, Visitors to Ross Island have reported unsettling occurrences, describing ghostly footsteps echoing in the icy darkness and mysterious voices that seem to emanate from nowhere. Some claim to have come face to face with full-on apparitions, believing to be the restless spirits of the plane crash victims. Wandering the frigid, snow-covered landscape for eternity, the haunting stories surrounding Ross Island have continued be passed down through generations of Antarctic explorers and researchers. Number seven, the UFO crash landing. In 2018, an ex-Navy SEAL who had worked in the South Pole revealed some intriguing information to an investigative journalist named Linda Moulton Howe 
about an alien structure he once visited. He wished to remain anonymous as this information was highly classified. In August of 2003, this individual and his team had been tasked with a highly classified objective under the guise of a research reconnaissance mission. They arrived at their destination where they found a large dark structure protruding from the ice. There were doors on it, and these big square slabs cut into the structure that when you, you push on, kind of receded into the building, opening up into this long hallway. The inside of the structure was lit green by an unknown source, and adorning the walls were strange hieroglyphics. But they didn't resemble any hieroglyphics seen here on Earth. Uh, this is a pretty outlandish story. Impossible to prove, but hard to discredit uh, completely, because it's just hearsay, really. But it is fascinating. Plus, Antarctica is one of the most unpopulated places on Earth. It would be a good spot for little green men from space to operate without the uh, presence of prying eyes. So let's stay on the topic of UFOs for a minute and discuss another possible UFO crash landing in Antarctica, this time spotted with satellite images. YouTube channel Secure Team 10 shared a video back in 2018 zooming close in on a small island just off the coast of Antarctica, which seemed to show a long Long, sharp mark in the snow as if something had crashed and then skidded along. Now this island has the exact same environment as Antarctica. It seems to be a piece of it that broke off and floated away. So it's inhospitable, totally void of people. So what is this object? The narrator describes it as cigar shaped, covered by mounds of snow. Whatever the object is, it's also very large and the trail it left behind is almost a thousand meters long. The trail behind this mysterious object leads to a mountain and there's debris that seems to have been pushed out at the base. It looks like as if the object flew down and crashed into the mountain before skidding along the ice where it now sits. Part of me thinks there could have been an avalanche or something on the mountain and maybe this is just a piece of rock that slid out extra far. I don't know. What do you all think though? At number five, we have Scott's Hut. Back to the haunted realm now. In 1911, 25 men led by Sir Robert Scott departed from this hut in Cape Evans on an expedition to the South Pole. An expedition they would never return from. The hut now stands just as it did all those years ago. There are belongings laying around, scientific equipment, equipment, even the frozen penguins the group had been studying remain on the outside of the hut. It's almost completely frozen in time. And as intriguing as it would be to give this place a visit, staff and visitors do claim to have an odd feeling when stepping inside it. There's a sadness about the place, an emptiness, a, a place that was so full of life, with uh, daring explorers about to begin an epic journey, never to come back. Only maybe they did come back. It's no surprise that with an eerie history like that, some folks believe the hut to be haunted. Ghostly whispers, shadowy figures, a sense of not being alone. These are just some of the things guests have reported during their visits. Number four, the giant hole. In 2017, researchers in Antarctica observed a massive polenia, a large area of open water within the sea ice, suddenly appearing. It was already massive, but things got even crazier when the polenia expanded at an unprecedented rate, increasing in size by more than eight times within just a few weeks. The discovery was made in Weddell Sea, an area known for its harsh freezing conditions. Polenias are not uncommon in Antarctica, but their sudden and substantial growth is a more rare occurrence. That puzzled the researchers. These gaps in the ice are usually maintained by complex processes, ocean currents, temperature variations, but the rapid expansion of this particular one challenged existing scientific understanding. Researchers and climate experts were left with a series of questions. Uh, what was causing this rapid expansion? Was it related to climate change, natural variability, or some other unknown factor, and the scientific community set out to study this event. With the use of satellite imagery, ocean sensors, and computer models, but the prevailing theory is that the polenia was caused by intense cyclones. Alright, next let's talk about all the military presence in Antarctica. What's going on there? Let's start by going all the way back to World War II. There have been rumors for decades that Mr. H himself, the dictator of Germany might have established a covert base in Antarctica. As for what they were doing there, there are lots of rumors, uh, but the SS were super into mysticism and the occult 
always in pursuit of ancient artifacts that they believed had powers that could aid in their conquest. Pretty wild, but maybe they were after something hidden somewhere in the frozen tundra. After the war in 1946 and 47, the US sent a huge fleet to Antarctica and many believe that they had been tasked with destroying this secret German base. As for more contemporary military activities, who knows what's going on? Just imagine vast hidden research facilities buried beneath the ice or cutting edge technology being uh, tested in the harshest conditions imaginable. Conspiracies suggest everything from advanced weaponry to secretive scientific experiments related to climate change or extraterrestrial phenomena? Who knows? And number two is Deception Island. Deception Island, nestled in the icy expanse of Antarctica, holds a chilling history that goes beyond its freezing temperatures. Once a bustling whaler's station, remnants of this grim past still linger in the form of whale bones strewn across some of its beaches, a reminder of an industry that relentlessly hunted these beautiful creatures. When the Great Depression hit and oil prices plummeted, the whaler's station was abandoned, only to be repurposed later as a British World War II base. Now today, visitors uh, to Whalers Bay, a landing site on this island, have shared tales of their experiences. Some have reported witnessing eerie apparitions, strange orbs of light. Some have even claimed to hear disembodied voices echoing across the ice. In 2009, when the crew of the American uh, TV show Destination Truth ventured to the bay, they captured unexplained bangs and the unsettling sight of a shadowy figure roaming among the decaying ruins. The crew even captured a thermal signature in a window and an SOS signal emanating from one of the abandoned shacks. But finally, we have the theory that Atlantis could have been located deep beneath the ice of Antarctica. According to Plato, Atlantis was this advanced civilization that mysteriously vanished overnight. Now, when we think of Atlantis, we usually picture it in the sunny Mediterranean, not, you know, buried under all that ice down south. But here's the twist. Antarctica wasn't always an icy wasteland. Millions of years ago, it had forests and a much milder climate. So some folks propose that Atlantis could have existed in Antarctica before it froze over, or some other ancient civilization. They point to satellite images showing uh, peculiar shapes under the ice, speculating that these could be remnants of the lost city. We already talked about a pyramid earlier. That could could have something to do with it. Scientists, though, uh, of course, remain skeptical. They've been studying Antarctica for years, haven't found any concrete evidence to support this idea, but it's fun to think about. Could that pyramid shape, again, possibly play into this? Who knows? Coming in at number 10, we have the legend of the angels. This is an ancient urban legend that has fueled a modern day one. Also, I want to say that Angels in Antarctica is a great name for a band. So basically, in the book of Enoch, it says, the angels, but not good ones, bad ones who wanted to breed with humans, were banished and trapped. <gasps> Shock, drama. A lot of people have interpreted this to be in Antarctica. Now, this old theory keeps on resurfacing. In March 2017, Israeli News Live published an article called The Fallen Angels Living in Antarctica Are Still Alive. But, like, are they? Coming in at number nine, we have The Ice is Alive. The ice is alive with the sound of singing. Any excuse, I swear. Some people think that Antarctica is a pure beast onto itself. It's a weather demon. The ice is sentient, they believe it, and it can choose when to mess with you. Around 1,000 people have died in Antarctica in the past 200 years as a result of serious disaster, but a further 20 or so explorers have died on the ice. Now, this includes Henry Walsley, Ernest Shackleton, and Andreas Beck. Expeditionists are prepared for the worst, but sometimes the elements turn. This has led to many suggesting that the ice is alive, something that seems backed up by the continent's mysterious singing ice. Don't believe me? Have a listen. Coming in to number 8, we have the Spirits of Flight 901. 
On the 28th of November 1979, Air New Zealand Flight 901 crashed into Mount Erebus on Ross Island in Antarctica. This killed 237 passengers and 20 crew and was honestly a really, really, really massive disaster, especially for New Zealand. The flight was a tourist flight in which passengers would get a chance to see Antarctica from the plane, which sounds pretty cool. Unfortunately, the weather turned and the pilot was inexperienced and got disorientated in the whiteout. He crashed into the mountain. Unfortunately, there were no survivors. Now, some of the bodies were stored at the McMurdo station on Ross Island before being flown back to New Zealand. Not all of the bodies were found either. Many people think that the McMurdo station is haunted, and those who have visited have reported a wrong feeling and perhaps a feeling of being watched. Maybe it's the ghostly presence of victims of the plane crash. Some people link the tragedy of the Air New Zealand flight to the no fly zone, an urban legend of the ice wall that's coming in at number seven. Literal troll lol 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 lol. Good old flat earthers. Time and time again, they just keep on coming back into these lists. Has anyone seen mine and Charlotte Dobre's interview of flat earther Mad Mike Hughes, by the way? It's on Inform Overload and is seriously worth a watch. It's going to be in the forthcoming Rocket Man movie. I wish that I'd asked him about the ice wall. Honestly, I really wish so. Basically, the flat Earth Society believes that there is a huge 150 foot ice wall surrounding the coast of Antarctica. What is on the other side of the wall? Well, they haven't been, so they can't tell you. No one has been. Apparently, they say that the world airlines are in cahoots and have signed a pact agreeing never to fly there. In total fairness, the explorer James Clark Ross, the British expeditionist who went to Antarctica in the mid 1800s, did actually write about an icy wall in his travel notes. He said, I quote, It was an obstruction of such character as to leave no doubt in my mind as to our future proceedings, for we might as well sail through the cliffs of Dover as to penetrate such a mass. Although, of course, many historians and those who have actually read the full extent of his journals will know that he is talking about an ice shelf, the Ross Ice Shelf that was named after him. This shelf is not 150 meters tall, it is just 50 meters and you can fly over it. Yes, the Air New Zealand flight did crash in Antarctica, but plenty of previously scheduled flights have flown over and back prior to the crash. Really, this is just a legend for the conspiracists. Coming into number six, we have John Kerry and the Antarctica Energy Beam. John Kerry was the 68th United States Secretary of State under Barack Obama. For those that aren't aware, this job is all about foreign policy. Now, in 2016, John Kerry visited Antarctica, and the reason for the trip has been somewhat shrouded in mystery. Good old Infowars thinks it has something to do with aliens. Others say that Barack Obama has a secret base there. Alex Jones of Infowars claimed on Twitter that Kerry had split a hurricane up using an energy beam. Weird. Some people also draw some strange conclusions from the fact that Kerry went from Antarctica to New Zealand and was followed by an earthquake. Coming into number five, we have the ghost of Blood Falls. Ah, the ghosts of Blood Falls. It sounds pretty grim, right? Blood Falls comes up a lot when we talk about Antarctica. It's one of the most visually dramatic places on Earth. Blood Falls is actually an area of the Taylor Glacier, which is named after Australian explorer Griffith Taylor, who discovered the macabre site in 1911. Now, the waterfall is a result of the Antarctic ice melting, and it looks like a giant bleeding gash in the snow. No wonder legend has it that the falls are haunted by evil spirits. It certainly is one of the most scary places on Earth, simply for its visuals. Although I have to say it isn't actually blood pouring from the glacier, it's an iron oxide tainted flow of salt water. The iron gives the water its bright red colour. Still though, seeing as it's in the snow, it's all red and very dramatic. If you look at it far off, it does look like a giant has been murdered or something, which is probably why people get an eerie feeling in the area. When I say people, few people have actually been there, but you know, a lot of people in blogs online. <laughs> Coming in at number four, we have the Nazi tunnels. It seems that Hitler went on a secret mission for oil in Antarctica in 1938, but many people believe that the leader of the Third Reich was constructing secret tunnels in a war bunker. It seems that Germany claimed an area of Antarctica called New Swabia, and the legends range from understandable to simply wild. Some say Hitler survived the war and escaped to South America. Some say he was spotted in Argentina. From there, it it was said that he ventured to the very tip of Patagonia and then into his Antarctic bunker to hide away for the rest of his life. Others say he was frozen and hidden there, which is 
pretty wild. Coming into number three, we have the ghost of Ernest Shackleton. Sadly, Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton died on his final expedition to Antarctica before he made it to the icy continent. He had previously been during his trans Antarctic expedition in 1914 to 1917, but sadly, the Irish explorer was never to return, except perhaps in the afterlife. It seems that his original hut, which still stands in the Antarctic, is actually haunted by his spirit. Basically, well, so the legend has it anyway. In 1958, explorer Sir Edmund Hillary decided to follow in the steps of the late expeditioner. In his expedition journal, he wrote, I remember when I first went to Shackleton's hut, and I'm not a person who really sees things very much, but I went inside the door. When I opened the door, it's rather sort of a bare hut inside, but I distinctly saw Shackleton walking towards me and welcoming me, and then he sort of flashed away and he was gone. Spooky. At least he was welcoming though. You gotta love a welcoming ghost. Coming into number two, we have the lost civilization. Some say that underneath the thick ice of the Antarctic, there is a lost civilization. Humans, as we know, came to be around 200,000 years ago. But what if all the information we have right now isn't actually all of the information? Africa and Antarctica separated 160 million years ago, and some say that long ago an ancient civilization existed alongside the dinosaurs, but are now lost to us. Others say that the timeline of these humans could be much more recent, saying that there is crustal displacement, which meant that large parts of Antarctica were ice free 12,000 years ago. This could have meant that ancient humans lived there. Now, if we know anything from evolution, it's actually far more likely. Greek philosopher Plato mentioned the city of Atlantis, which was inhabited by half humans, half gods, which actually sounds rather a lot like the descriptions of an angel to me, which, hang on for a hot minute, that sounds pretty familiar. Is the lost city of Atlantis buried under the ice, or once again, is it angels? Finally, coming in at number one, we have aliens. Aliens, 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 aliens. For anyone who's ever watched me on Inform Overload, that's my alien song, and I like singing it. It's long been speculated that there is something shifty going on down in Old Ante. That's my new name for Antarctica. Should have used it sooner, really. In September 2018, Google Earth images seem to show mysterious structures becoming visible under the melting ice. The structures appear in a settlement around the size of a small town, which may make people think that actually this is a lost city. But there are tracks and what looks like an airstrip. This has merely added fuel to the aliens and anti theory. Is it aliens? A lot of people think so. So, kicking off the list at number 10, sea pigs. This list gets creepy and or crawly, but first we gotta ease into the Arctic Ocean. We gotta start off this haunting list with the sea pig. Look at this little guy, okay, the pug of the ocean. He looks like a stress ball with feelings. What's going on with him? They look like something that would be microscopic, but really they're six inches long wide, round, big, I don't know, they're pretty large. They stick together, and I mean that in a literal sense. Sea pigs will travel in large gatherings. They live in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, so they're hard to find, really. Their mating routine is also still a mystery. We have no idea how they do it. And just by looking at them, we're like, no guesses, certainly no guesses from me. All we know is that they travel in groups, so. I don't know. Sounds like it's a good time, at least. Lifespan and mating life, total mystery. All we know is that they eat decaying matter on the ocean floor. Kudos to the crew over at Embari. The footage they find of these deep sea creatures is always fascinating. It's always so otherworldly over at Embari. Are you guys hiring? I'm afraid of the ocean, but you know, I'll do some behind the scenes stuff, who knows. I'll just edit the weird fish. I'll put the text in. Like, what the f is this? Ooh. Number nine, rock bottom. A little over a year ago, scientists camped out in the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf for nearly three months. Why? All in the name of science. Yeah, we're getting cold. Geologist James Smith from the British Antarctic Survey slept in a tent. Who does this? Why do you choose to do this? James Smith, apparently. Here we go. He flew five hours out to this ice shelf. Him and his team had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to pour hot water through this ice shelf for 30 hours straight. When the team lowered their gear down through this 3,000 feet of Ice, they couldn't get a sample of sediment from the ocean floor because they hit a boulder. I mean, the odds here alone, I mean, the entire seafloor is basically flat and they end up hitting this thing. At first, they were frustrated, but this boulder that is 160 miles away from daylight is home to microbial malts, these alien like sponges. These cylindrical sponges, possibly hydroids. I love seeing scientists get jazzed about stuff. They're like, oh, this rock had absolutely no business being here. Like, guy, you just melted through ice for 20 hours in the middle of Antarctica. I, I I feel like it's the other way around. Imagine if those sea sponges could talk. They're like, oh, of all the spots, really? 
please close that. The first shred of light, and it's just a big GoPro coming at them. They're like, what is that? Number eight, Emperor Penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all Emperor Penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all Emperor Penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. That's <laughs> so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings, they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. Horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close. They're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the hoff crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. 
he's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the Hoff crab with this photo. So random, imagine following him and you see this, you're like, what's going on, why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean where the water is too cold for the Hoff crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy Hoff look. Because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the Hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're going to fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm going to go throw up. I never want to see any of these in real life. Awesome. Mm -hmm.